sim racers welcome back uh, surprise live stream as usual after works extra work uh, we have to do some presets for the mercedes uh, because as we said uh, the car has changed quite a bit on the latest update uh, with uh, some of the data not all the data from uh, the evo uh, 2 car that they are actually running right now and um, because of that uh, the old presets are a little bit unstable a little bit not quite so good so i want to do some uh, aggressive presets that they are you know easy to get on and have a good race have some decent performance and also good base to work and make your own presets uh, that are even faster or whatever your own uh, setups that are faster or whatever uh so uh yeah, as usual, uh, Sasa asks if the setups are good to do a decent lap time. Sasa, sì, mh, sono buoni per fare un tempo decente, ovviamente eh, dipende cosa intendi per buon tempo. Uh, un alieno farà tempi alieni, un pilota medio farà piloti, eh, cioè, tempi medi, eccetera, eccetera. Uh, perciò, chiaro che da un setup ultra, extra, mega, super performante ci sarà sempre un distacco, ma devi essere anche bravo a portarlo noi cerchiamo di fare un preset dove è facile da entrare dentro sapere che è una buona base aggiustare lo stile di guida su di esso e fare dei tempi più che buoni uh, ok so um, last time we've been working on Kailami so let's get back and fix the uh, setup a little bit because it wasn't that I wasn't so satisfied with it so let's get into uh, into the the simulator and uh, have a go again at Kayalami. Right. Let's load up. How are you doing, guys, in the chat? Hope you're having fun. <laughs> Hello, King Carrot. <laughs> Hello, Daniel. Hello, Matthias. All right. So uh, let's load the. Uh, latest setup actually i have been playing a little bit with this and what i did was um, i put a much stiffer front anti-roll bar and uh, i've kept everything else as it was a little bit extra preload uh, and i've put the brake bias towards the rear end uh, nice daniel nice maybe we could do a little bit of suzuka afterwards then all right, so let's have a go. Green light, go, go, go. See how the car uh, behaves. Again, those are setups, as I said, that have to be, you know, drivable by pretty much everybody. Uh, oops, sorry, I was reading the chat as usual. Let me get back to it. Um, so those are setups that are. Uh, have to be drivable by everybody uh, and uh, that means even people that you know play with the joypad or with the keyboard possibly or they are not so good uh, or even you know even good players that they don't know how to make a setup or at least use this setup as a base to go into something more performant uh, so it's not the perfect solution for all they are based on the real setup of the car, so we also use them as a verification that you know things are working, and so on. So that's how that's what it is. Uh, Giuse, sì, uh, il video precedente proprio abbiamo fatto tre o quattro preset per uh, altre piste. Perciò video precedente proprio, ultimo della lista. All right, so uh, let's get back. Hello, Matthias. All right. Let's see if after a full day of work, we can still have some concentration to do a couple of laps. So the rear um, brake bias helps me to rotate the car into the slower turns of uh, Kailami and the very stiff front anti-roll bar helps me to stabilize the car into this very tricky and very fast uh, 13 
over here. Gives obviously some understeer, especially at the exit, but let's uh, hit up the tires and see what is going to happen. Uh, Daniel, not really, not really. That was, uh, we hit uh, rock bottom as we say. <laughs> it wasn't a nice experience at all. But it's okay. Life goes on as they say. <laughs> Most importantly, at the end of uh, this series of presets, I want also to show you how you could, okay, get a preset, you know, and from that, evolve to something much more uh, higher in performance. This is something that I would like to, to show you. Hello, the truth. Welcome to the channel. The random uh, light flash on the webcam, you mean, uh, is uh, probably this uh, stupid webcam that uh, it just doesn't work. We tried everything, firmware updates, uh, driver updates, uh, different softwares, uh, whatever. We would just do that. I think one of the reasons is that it's probably the USB-C uh, uh, USB-C doesn't give the correct uh, voltage to the webcam and every now and then it, it just flashes. Maybe if I try with an uh, uh, external USB-C that you know also has power, uh, extra power in it, maybe it would work better, but honestly, we'll see. At some point I might just you know, simply switch the camera with another one, the webcam with another one. It is annoying. No, it's a Z370. Hello, John. Φίλε, εφημερία, όπα ρε μεγάλε, γιατρέ μου, γιατρέ μου, πάλι καλά που είστε κι εσείς. Καλή εφημερία, φίλε μου. Άντι μόνοι είσαι εδώ, πλέμε Άντι. Remember guys, this is the new Άντι merchandise shop. Already getting great stuff in it. Okay, so I have a little bit too much understeer here. Let's see if we can find a compromise or a different solution. Oh, a little bit far backwards. Presses are low. I was expecting higher pressure. Did I? Yeah, the temperatures are correct. Ah, here it is, the, uh, the brand new shop from Andimon. Hopefully soon with also Aris Drive's uh, stuff in it as well. But we'll see, but for now, Andimon is creating some great t-shirts looking forward to get some and it's a very good uh, way to also support the work of uh, Andy that has been always here making all the uh, you know organizing all the races leagues for all the community I think he deserves it and most importantly the shirts are nice Hello, Otto! Brother Bane, this has been your personal advice. Oh, 
Right, with some extra rear works, brake bias, the turn in seems to be better. Without big problems into the uh, stability of the car. Uh, I don't really like it here yet. So, have to find a better solution. Alright, so. Let's go to the garage. It's not bad, but it is a little bit tricky on that very fast uh, right-hander. So let's see if we can improve on that. So I'll give it some extra camber uh, at the rear to help it at the high speed. And uh, what can we do? <coughs> right, so let's go a little bit down to something like six and something in between for the brake wire so i'm trying to find a good compromise to have uh, a decent entry over there because for those for those setups i mean if you are if you have done enough practice okay hello frantix uh if you have done enough practice and uh, you are confident with the setup and you know you learn how to do it, then you can go into that turn even with some extra oversteer, it's no big issue. But for someone that just gets into the aggressive setup, I want them to be safe, I want them to be ready to go without having, you know, big issues in one single turn of the track. So, let's see. Yasumano. Uh, yes, Matthias, exactly, this is correct. Hello, Hilento. Hello, Janut. Yes, uh, Matthias, uh, 1.5 is already available in uh, 1.8 point, um, what is, 19, yes. Absolutely, actual versus public, uh, you have this car right now. And it is, uh, it is quite, I, I believe it's m very strong, and if you guys go into it and try it, you will have a revelation. It's very, very good car to drive right now. All right, so where were we? Um, you know what? We could uh, we could raise the right uh, the rear wing as well. Let's go to nine. So practically we were in eighteen. We were like this. So one point one. So let's go to nine. Like this, and uh, see what happens. Because more rear wing means more stability in situations of uh, extreme pitch. You know. You're braking very fast, you're trying to turn, and so on. Lovely sim racing, Calispera. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's do another couple of laps. Yeah, I think tonight we're gonna get some pizza as well here into the family because we didn't have time to make any dinner. But later on, we'll see. But sounds like a good idea. Well, it looks good. But obviously still soft tires and cold tires and everything, so let's see. Ooh, oh, expecting this. And uh, can't say I like it. Turning is much improved, so maybe that's why over there we had that big of a yo moment. Here is much better, the car here is much better. You can see how I can keep the car on the inside part of the road.
Alright, first lap, tires still coming up. Hello, P Dub. Hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> A bit too aggressive on the accelerator and uh, late on the correction. Yep, again. Why your car accelerates slow in a slow line? What do you mean by slow line? Let me know so we can see if we can understand what is happening. Sasa no, perché noi su ACC facciamo esclusivamente SRO, il campionato SRO. È come chiedere se su Formula 1, no, con Masters, arriverà, che ne so, uh, qualsiasi pista che non è nel calendario, che so. No. Alright, let's see if the car is... Pressures are almost perfect now. Not bad, not perfect. higher um, oh come on Aris. yeah not not that much uh, no I don't mark I don't want to go more to the rear with the brake bias because as we said this is a setup that has to work as a base for pretty much everybody uh, if and it's very easy for someone more advanced to you know get this setup and work his way with a couple of clicks into a much more performance uh, setup uh, variation. Uh, Peter, new to sim racing, welcome to the uh, drag community. <laughs> welcome aboard, mate. Uh, advice is learn reference points and how to drive with reference points. That's the number one advice. Number two advice, join a community make friends and go online with them uh, so that you are in a, into an IBN that they will not judge you for your errors but they will help you to get better that's the best thing you can do um, uh, your car accelerates slowly in a straight line, no matter what TC. Well, the t in a straight line, the TC shouldn't even activate. Uh, check that your uh, clutch pedal, for example, doesn't uh, stutters, doesn't, you know, triggers a little bit, just, you know, a, a slight 1%, because this will make practically your clutch to uh, slip and you will lose a lot of acceleration. So check the dead zones on the accelerator, of course, that goes 100%, and also add a little bit of uh, dead zones uh, to your clutch pedal. For example, you go into the options, controls, okay, and you go into the clutch here, and make sure that you add a tiny bit of percentage at the minimum limit uh, in order to uh, not have your, your clutch, you know, being just slightly pressed 
alone and makes the, the clutch slip and you don't have acceleration. So control this. That might be the case. I have heard that before, so that's why I'm, uh, I'm saying about that. Um, <laughs> All right, so um, what do we have here? Uh, boop, 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 boop. It wasn't that bad. Uh, we could use a tiny little bit of stability. The pressures were a little bit low on this side. So maybe we can fix this. Um, and uh, what else? I could go one lower here and see what happens. Uh, Mark, this is, uh, of course we thought about that, but this is not something that it was in the plans uh, to uh, to have, to maintain and, and so on uh, when we were doing a Seto Corsa Competizione. Alright, um, let's try it with a little bit less right here at the rear, just, you know, to see what's going on. But yes, this is what we're doing right now. Yeah, you know, we were not doing very professional and uh, highly scientific work right now. We know that we have a, a couple of setups from the real car and we know the ballpark they, they stay in and we try to reproduce this and see if it works. At the same time, we also have to uh, make it so that you know, it's still enjoyable, but pretty much everybody makes a good pace for everybody and can be improved if needed by more advanced people. It takes a little bit of time, you know, to drive it around, but that's how it works. Oh, went, went in way too, too hot and uh, it stayed disabled, so that's uh, good news. <laughs> Ferrari car computer, <laughs> that would be nice, yeah. Yeah, exactly that, Luis.
Alright. Presses are tested. So let's see what we what we can do. long on the brake pedal, I could have released this earlier. Curve over there, my bad. Again, cutting too much the portal right now. But It's okay. It's okay. Well done, mate. Not not a bad setup for uh, for a preset. So let's save this. I think it's decent. Um, so Kia, that's okay. We will save this as good. <coughs> All right. Let me check a little bit. Um, Gael. Uh, they parle pas français, unfortunately. I'm sorry. The back door passes la seconde sur volant dîner. Est-ce mon volant? Gaël, you have to tell us exactly what happens because, like that, and unfortunately, I don't speak uh, French. I can understand a little bit if I read it, but not all of it. Sorry. But for sure, if you if you go into the Discord channel, uh, channel and server, they will help you for sure. We have French-speaking uh, people. Uh, you know, I've been trying to cut your stream for three months. Wow. <laughs> hey, Smith, welcome aboard, mate. I, d I don't know, Daniel. We'll have to see when it, when it happens. Uh, 
Okay, so we saved here. Let's. Um, I think it's it's good enough. Uh, let's go to Suzuka. That uh, who was it? Daniel, I think, is racing a Suzuka. So why not? Let's uh, copy this setup at Suzuka because I believe that the uh, track is similar, so makes sense. Um, where is it? Mercedes. Mercedes. Come on. Yeah, here it is. So okay, let me. We got this. Uh, And let's go to Suzuka and all right. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I I can almost. Uh, how to say, I can almost promise that it's going to be much better, but it will take a couple of months or so for the uh, for Ulton Park and Kerbs and stuff like that. All right, so Suzuka. The power output uh, is... Um, yeah, never, never look the uh, road cars power output uh, that simply do not uh, have any any uh, resemblance because of the re restrictors. Uh, but the car, the I mean, you should upshift when the LEDs become red. So seven thousand, seven thousand one hundred, something like that. Um, but in the next uh, installment, you should upshift a little bit sooner at six hundred eight. Uh, uh, sorry, 6,800, uh, 6,800, but that's for later, for some months later. Alright, so, um, how was the setup here? Seven, yeah, very low. Let's, let's, uh, let's get the Kayalami setup. And work from there. We will also, for sure, try. We will need to, to to change the. Maybe we don't need to change the pressure that much because Suzuka again is very left right. Uh, it's pretty uh, stable. I mean, it's an eight, so. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Green light. Go go go. time I haven't been driving at Suzuka and it is a very very tricky track so I apologize in advance if I if I suck big time. <laughs> Fante! Fante! Welcome to the channel bait! Not uh, go to the second gear. Obviously, I mean, this car has sold uh, a million copies and more, and nobody has an issue with second gear. So there is something going wrong, either in your configuration. So check the configuration of, of uh, the steering wheel, into the options, the controls options, or check the steering wheel. Maybe, you know, in the controls, I'm talking about PC because I don't know for controls, but maybe in the controls you have uh, the same paddle of changing into second gear and also doing something else. Uh, and so the two go in confusion and you have an issue. So double check that the button you're using to change gear is not also used for uh, something else. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. 
by tiles. Or you have the long press, yeah, also that. Yeah, if you are on the PC, you can save your configuration, okay? And then, once you have saved the config configuration, you can reset the configuration and see if one of the default presets uh, of, of uh, controls configuration works. If it works, it means something in your configuration is wrong. So load it up again and uh, correct it. <laughs> the tires are gone, practically. It's just completely destroyed. Them. get back to desert uh, pressures. Oh my god, that's so bad here. to understand what's going wrong with, uh, with the car. Obviously this is a track with very fast turns, so you see that there is too much rotation, both in slow, mid and high speed turns, so the first fix is easy. You see so much of a rotation here. So let's have a look at the replay. This is one of the indications you can check to, to see if something is wrong with your driving or with the car. So we are approaching this very, very fast left hander. Okay. And I want you guys to, to see uh, we are going to enter the turn in cost. We're not even braking. So let's go down here in the speed. This is slow motion. So you see. We are going to start braking here and then completely cost. Okay, now we are costing no inputs from the pedals. So no throttle, no brake, nothing. We're just turning the, the steering wheel and we're keeping the steering wheel stable. So the steering input is fixed into, um, into a rotation. And you can see by just doing that, nothing else, the car already over rotates. Okay, so completely over rotates and I have to correct and counter steer because we are going into heavy, heavy, heavy oversteer. This is a very clear indication that the car has over rotation. Okay, now you might be a very good driver, whatever you like it, you can control it. That's your stuff. But starting, you, you need to start from a stable car, from a neutral car and then work into this and see how much you want. This is something that it doesn't even let you, uh, you know, drive with the car, attack the car or whatever. So first thing is let's make the car behave into this turn, which is very fast, very difficult. So we need to make it stable when we go in costing. That's the number one issue to solve into this situation. So again, it's very important to understand how to do it. If you are using pedal inputs so you are giving acceleration you are taking off acceleration you are giving brake uh, inputs or you're taking off brake inputs and you are actively moving the steering wheel then all of that might mean that it's your driving style that doesn't work okay but if you're not doing anything of this so you're just release the, the pedals go into the turn and stay stable with the steering wheel and the car either goes straight because it understeers way too much or it over rotates okay that means that you have a basic handling issue so let's fix first this basic handling issue and then work around this to find a handling that we we like most okay let's go and do that
Christoph, thanks for the follow, mate. Uh, small gas input absolutely will help with that, okay? Uh, but that means that uh, the, the problem between the steering wheel and the uh, racing seat, this guy, is doing something to, you know, correct the car, help the car, whatever. So when you are doing something uh, to do, you know, to, to counter correct something that the car does, that means that um, you are not objective anymore. It's uh, subjective. It means that the driver is doing stuff. Okay. First, we want the car to behave properly. And then the driver can come over that and, you know, give its opinion. First, you need a neutral car as much as possible with a little bit of stability. And then the, the driver will tell you, no, I want more rotation because I'm having issues or I want less rotation because I'm having issues. And then you can correct this. But you need to start from a, from a stable car. If your car over rotates alone without doing anything and you're just giving inputs to correct this, that will then probably lead you to take decisions that are not correct. Okay? So let's go here. And uh, number one thing to do, obviously, is we are going way down here, something like that, okay, to see if we can if we can fix that. Uh, let me check something first because something doesn't add up into the things we did at, at Kailami. Uh, that, that, that's, that's why it, I was actually a bit curious how the setup could be so oversteady when it was decent at, uh, at Kailami. Turns out that we copied the wrong setup. We copied the setup from Nürburgring, which has slow turns and we needed more rotation. Uh, so that's what we copied. So let's, let's do this first. Uh, Let's let's see if what we did works, and then we can get you know the uh, the old setup. So what we did was just lower the rear end, and we're gonna check very fast if it works, and then we get the correct setup. Hello, Rob. <laughs> uh, Smith, very very good. Uh, Sorry. Yes. Uh, very, very well. You know, saying about the body car, which is exactly this. So we just lower the rear end, just to make sure that at least our logic is correct, and then we'll, we'll go and get the other setup and work from there. You can already see that the car not over rotating anymore actually it's even a little bit too under steering let's see if it works on the yeah, you can see how 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 stable actually understeer it is here. Okay, let's go. Again, we're gonna try to brake a little bit sooner and go inside in costing and see if our logic is you know is working. Ah, look at that. Perfect. Perfect. That's it. That's it. So, the logic is correct. It works. You see how easier it is to control the car right now. Now we can fix it and see how we can improve it. But first, you need a car that behaves properly. It doesn't uh, forces you to do things that you're not comfortable with. Okay, let's go back. 
Uh, Rob, I don't know. I haven't read the comments yet. <laughs> Lazy dev as usual. So I don't know what what happened. I hope nothing, nothing, no big deal. So don't worry about it anyway. All right, all right. So as I said, the car was oversteady because we uh, wrongly got the preset from the Nurburgring, which is a truck that has slow corners, and you need rotation to uh, to get over the, the slow corners. Um, so now we're gonna get the the correct setup from Kyle Ami and see how the car behaves. So this is it. You see, it it's called Kaya New Aggressive. Uh, wrongly, we got New Aggressive, which, which was the one from Nurburgring. So yeah. Okay, let's let's uh, get this. That looks also high at the rear end, but it has also higher rear wing and a little bit different mechanical uh, balance. So hopefully it will work. If it doesn't work, we know already that we need to lower a little bit uh, the rear end to make it work. All right, let's go. Go. Uh, uh. <laughs> There is a little bit of extra rotation, but we'll check in a minute and see how it behaves. Remember also guys, uh, the actual asphalt is different from truck to truck. And uh, Suzuka is uh, very famous of uh, having a very very slippery asphalt. And that obviously means that uh, the car will use stability if it is too agile. again we did the same exact thing the car just over rotated I mean it doesn't make any sense to, to try another once more let's, let's just have a look at the replay and uh, see what happens all right so hard we are going to start breaking on 50 release the brakes go in stable steady wheel and the car already over rotates and goes into overspin so we're gonna fix that turn to the garage and uh, let's go down 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 let's try 78 I'm, I'm just you know guessing now we'll try 78 and see what's uh, what's going on how it uh, reacts <laughs> Daniel, yes, that's not gonna be good. Well, uh, unfortunately, I don't have experience from the console PS4 with the uh, steering wheel. Um, if you guys can tell, Gael, there is um, there is uh, a, the website with a form for problems uh, for the console version. If you can point them, uh, point him there. Hello Alpha, how are you doing buddy?
or uh, the uh, the guy has an issue with uh, the paddle uh, up shifts do not work at second gear or something like that. You know, I don't know exactly what's going on. Reload is like, you know, fourth or fifth place in the various steps I'm doing for the setup. Um, if you check uh, Sandal 11, uh, I have a playlist uh, that is called uh, uh, the, set, the steps to make a custom setup. Okay, And on those steps I'm going by importance. Uh, so, first step, you know, is uh, tire pressures. Second step, uh, springs and pumps them. Uh, third step, uh, and so on and so on. So preload is one of the last steps. So it's more fine tuning that than completely changing the behavior. Oh, rock solid. That's how we do it. For uh, such cars that have. Uh, that are quite aerodynamically sensitive. Uh, first things you do is change the aero balance, and that uh, is obtained by the right heads. That's the most important thing you can do. Number one, number two, actually after after the pressures. Yeah, there is a full uh, playlist about it. I'm pretty sure uh, John or Adibor will find it in a minute. But if you go in the channel, the main page of the channel, and search for playlist, you're gonna find it. Can you find the playlist of the steps uh, to a custom setup and post it? not bad, it is a little bit of unstable, it loses a little bit of traction at the, at the limit, but then again, at Suzuka, I mean, what do you expect? Let's see in a minute how the pressures are. Ah, there it is. Thank you, Andy. If it's not correct, blame Andy. If it is correct, go buy something from the merchandising for, from Andy.
<laughs> I <laughs> I went out of the of the penultimate turn so fast that I was not able to actually stop the car for the last chicane. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, pressures. Ah, pressures are a little bit all over the place, so that might be one of the reasons why we are having those losses of uh, traction. So let's fix this. So let's go down by at least uh, four here. Okay, and another four here, and two here, and it looks looks okay. -ish. Um, mm, not sure if we can improve on a couple of things. It, it's not bad actually. Okay, let's uh, let's go. Let's go back. Get out, boink. <laughs> I would love to help you, but I don't know how to help you because I don't have a, a console and I don't know how your specific steering wheel is configured into that console. That's that's why you see me that I'm avoiding because I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if you managed to get into the Discord. If you have, then certainly somebody is going to help you out with this.
stop the car. <laughs> yeah, we made it, all right. Alright, okay, okay, okay. Um, we still have a little bit of extra pressure here, so let's go down. Alright, and uh, we could use a little bit less understeer. Uh, just a hint. So I don't want to do something on the right head. Maybe. We'll go just one down on the bump stop rate. Just you know, a hint of extra. Okay. Maybe one down on the preload rate. Let's see. Fine-tuning. Well, the aim uh, doesn't actually have have a splitter uh, what they can do is they can cover parts of the front radiator uh, and front uh, whole front opening and when they do that they improve the drag and the downforce of the front end so we simulated the same aspect and we call it splitter on, uh, on the uh, on the setup page and what it does is obviously you raise it and uh, you gain more front downforce but it also makes the car a little bit more uh, pitch sensitive uh, and you lower it and you get less downforce and the car is a little bit less pitch uh, sensitive the drag difference is not that much it's almost nothing What is special about the uh, Mercedes? Well, the car is one of the most uh, fast ones in the whole grid. 
and the engine is very good from get going so it has a very strong acceleration from the 5500 rpm up so you can rotate the car on the accelerator very nicely works well save this I think it's not bad so Suzuka oops Suzuka new hug usual stuff T37 okay I think uh, eh, eh. <laughs> If you tried it now, you'd see that it is better in terms of uh, saving the car. It's much better. It's not that um, instant lost loss as, as it was before, uh, but the percent that it has doesn't help it. Okay, so I think Imola has already a decent setup. Might be wrong because it was made later on you know and uh, so maybe the the setup for Imola isn't that bad let me just do just a lap to, to remember what it is but uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna go through and do all the setups for Imola right now I'll tell you why in a minute yeah when it's going it's gone but you know you can say this for a lot of cars like the Audi or the Lambo or but you know, at, at some point those cars, I mean, for sure it's not so benevolent like, uh, I don't know, the uh, uh, the Bentley, so to say, uh, or uh, the Lexus, or, you know, cars like, or the M4, uh, so, yeah, you, you could say that. Yes, I think I think Imola setup should be decent. I don't want to touch it if it's decent, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, first, it, the videos we do here have always can always be used uh, because, as you can see, we do not uh, use any exploits. We try to make our setups always and. Uh, also our advice always uh, very uh, realistic which means that even if we do improvements on the physics engine the basic concept will remain the same so everything you see on the channel will work pretty much always almost always uh, and most importantly I believe will also work pretty much with other sims out there it, it makes sense it's all stuff based on actual physics and realistic uh, you know, choices that you can do in order to improve your uh, your car. Obviously, there would be small differences, you know, details, but the main concepts are valid. And if we know that there are some exploits that can make you a little bit faster or whatever, we are not going into there. We'll not talk about that. We're staying. Uh, as realistic as possible because afterwards if we improve on that aspect of the physics engine we want our, our advice to be still valid you know Well, the tow one is one of those exploits, the using very low uh, springs and going over the bump stops way too much is one of those exploits. 
Um, they are not that, you know, big of exploits. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not something unseen into the reality. Maybe not on those cars, and maybe not at that extent. But again, you have to take everything into perspective. So you will often listen from the people to, that will tell you, oh, put the rear, you know, tow, maximum negative, and you're done. And then if you see the axle, not, not always the one that they sell, but the axle alien setups, they don't use it completely negative they will go to something like minus 20 minus 25 0 25 somewhere around there and they play with it in order to get it exactly where they want so it's not like yeah put it to minus 0.4 and that's it don't don't work with that anymore so even at, in this aspect it's not a complete exploit it's something that shouldn't be that that much but still not 100%. The bump stop is not something that I like, but it is probably uh, in order to, to make the car behave a little bit uh, because the dampers do not work as they should. So those are the main ones, honestly. They play with the dampers with some values. Uh, for example, they put the rear uh, slow bump stop to zero, which again, because it doesn't work properly. Uh, they play with the negative toe and with the very soft spring. That's it mainly. We're not talking something like drift the car around everywhere and it works. We don't talk uh, something around like, uh, I don't know, go to the, uh, to the grass to pull the, the tires, you know. It's only some parts of the setup that they should work in a way, but it seems that it makes more sense to put them in a slightly less realistic way and not play with them too much. So, we are working on that, trying to understand why this engine uh, performs like that and how we can avoid it because it's not just, you know, limit the range and that's it. Uh, we don't want to do this, we want to understand why it works like this and how we can improve the physics engine in order to make it better. I know it's, uh, you know, a scandal of the moment, it is true, but there is also, uh, as usual, a bit of uh, exaggeration into what's happening, as usual, so the truth is always in the middle. Setup is not bad. The setup is not bad at Imola. I mean, it's drivable. Uh, why I don't want to create a new setup at Imola? Because at Imola you need to work a lot of the on the dampers. And right now I'm not happy how the dampers work, and uh, on what I am working behind the scenes is so much better. And I prefer to do this when things work properly, so it will also have, uh, you know, some sense. To, to talk about it and show how, how it works. So uh, uh, it, uh, it, it, we, we will get back to it when we will have something to show you guys that works properly. Otherwise, it doesn't really make, uh, make sense to work right now and do something that just works around the problem, the actual problem, which is the dampers. Uh, keep in mind that dampers and simulators, at least, from how we do it, there are always going to be some problems with them. There are always going to be some problems. But why is that? Because the refresh rates, in order to have real dampers, should be so high, okay, so high, that we cannot do it because in the end we all have consumer computers and the graphics have to run, and the, you know, the AI has to run, and the multiplayer has to run, and the sound has to run, and all the rest of the physics has to run. So we would need something like to give you an idea, in professional simulators for Formula 1, a good driver can understand when the uh, physics engine runs from 
4,000 hertz to 6,000 hertz. They can, they can tell the difference in the dumpers. And they try to do that, and they have a whole team trying to make the simulators run as fast as possible. They have just a team to do that. Okay? And we are here talking how we can get better in 400 hertz. So we're talking 10 to 15 times more refresh rate. So, and there are even, you know, uh, Formula One teams, professional high-end Formula One teams, that they are not able, able and capable to run their physics engine at more than 1,000 or 2,000 hertz. They just cannot do it. So, it's it's hard stuff. But there is always advancement. There is always improvements that can be made. I think we are into a correct uh, uh, way. At least we're we're doing one step forward. Let's say. So, fingers crossed. Patience. Working on it. Allora, Daniele, basta, porca di quella miseria. Come faccio a farti sottotitoli in tempo reale? Come faccio? Almeno dovresti sapere che YouTube ha bisogno di un po' di tempo per creare i sottotitoli automatici di, tra di traduzione e dopo ti fai i sottotitoli, ma deve passare un po' di tempo, non in tempo reale in una live stream. Inoltre ho sempre detto, se volete fare una domanda in italiano io rispondo. Però chiaramente dobbiamo fare spiritosi, dobbiamo dare la nostra. Bravo. Andiamo avanti, dai. Uh, um, other, other questions here? Uh, what do you mean about brake boosting? Eh, eh? No, no, for all, Samuel, for all, for all dumpers, for all cars, for everything, obviously. Uh, what else is the Dragging brace to heat up tires eventually, like information uh, lap. Well, that, that's something they are doing in reality as well, to drag brakes. Maybe not that much, because obviously in reality you also have uh, material fatigue that if you do it too much, as we do it in, in the simulator, then you might uh, have uh, small cracks into the material, which we don't simulate that. Ah, brake boosting in the start with uh, turbo delay and so on. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, you can, you can do it. They also do it in reality up to a point, but they also have some extra EQ um, modes to help with turbo building up pressure. So it, it is uh, practically realistic. It, it's nothing wrong with that, you know. So it's not a priority to see, ah, maybe we should limit it. Why? Because you just get a little bit of extra boost on the start. It, it, it's okay. Uh, Uh, block fan? I have to double check, I don't remember. No, Daniele, vedi, non ti piace che ho reagito così, ok? Immaginati dalla mia parte adesso che viene uno e ti dice ti stanno sulle palle gli italiani. Cioè, capisci? È l'approccio. Cioè, io non ti conosco, tu mi conosci, arrivi qui la prima volta... Prima cosa, che mi dici, prima cosa che mi dice è che mi stanno sulle palle gli italiani. Non ci stiamo, non ci siamo. Se tu vuoi farlo spiritoso uscendo aggressivo così, devi anche accettare una critica aggressiva. Perché lo senti una volta, lo senti due, lo senti tre, sì, quando uno te lo dice in modo educato, risponde in modo educato, a un certo punto, cioè, se fossimo faccia a faccia non me l'avresti detto così. No? E io sono abbastanza stanco di persone che vanno online e parlano come gli pare perché non sono faccia a faccia. Capito? 
comportati bene, mi comporto anch'io bene. Capisci? Cioè, non è bello dire, ah, però hai reagito male. Eh, ma vedi come hai, ti sei impostato tu, pronti via. Vabbè, andiamo avanti. What frames? I don't remember. <ride> Uh, hi Niels, I saw, no, I, I saw now that you're here. Uh, hey Cop, man, thank you so much for the support, always. Thank you so much. Uh, where notification for yesterday's stream? I think the bot on the Discord channel is broken. Um, uh, are you going to see Mexpo? No, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. Thanks again, buddy. I don't know Daniel depends uh, how it goes so um, okay so we did that it's 8 o'clock I think I'm gonna call it a day guys it's a little bit late because I still have to, to get dinner I haven't had dinner yet and uh, Let's see if we can do another one tomorrow and maybe do some faster track like Monza. I, I was, uh, I had in plans to do Monza tonight, but we did uh, otherwise. Uh, like Monza or um, Poricar or something like that and see a little bit of details what we can do. Okay. So, thanks very much for, uh, for joining, guys. I uh, hope you like the format. Uh, what else to do? I don't know. Take care. Stay cool. Good night. See you.